Hi everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Virgil here. Welcome to my channel. Today we are creating a journal cover, but this could be an art journal page as well. And it's part of my napkin series. So I am starting with the cover of a spiral notebook and I've taken the cover off the spiral and I've given it a coat of gesso on all four sides, front and back cover. Now I am applying tissue paper to the front cover and the back cover, not the inside flaps. And I'm putting several layers and I'm really trying to build up the texture. Some places is going to have more and some is going to have less. I really like both on an art journal page and on a cover. I like having that texture. It makes the paints differently. It gives a lot of extra zing to your page, or in this case, art journal or journal cover. This is more of a notebook. So I'm putting several layers on and then I'm letting that dry overnight. It's fairly wet because again, there's multiple layers of tissue paper with the Liquitex fluid matte medium. Now I told you just before, I love texture. So I'm using this Harlequin stencil, it's a six inch stencil, and I'm putting modeling paste through the stencil, adding just a little bit more texture, interest, pattern, to the background. And again, especially on an art journal or a journal cover, I love um, feeling that texture. That's what really makes these covers so incredibly special. But this, again, this would be perfect on a canvas. In fact, I may take this and do this on a canvas. Now I'm scraping off some of the modeling paste that I just editing, and that's just personal, what do I like? But you can always go back in. It's a little bit more difficult because there's texture underneath, but not impossible. And because this is a background and I want, I'm building up that texture, I want some differences when the paint goes on, I'm not worried. This is a stamp from Stamperia, and this stamp, the napkin, as well as many six inch TCW uh, stencils can be purchased at ninniesnapkins.com. That is an affiliate link. So I do make get a commission from any and all of my affiliate links, just so you know. But I love this spiral stamp. And I wanna put some of this in the background. And I'm stamping into wet acrylic. This swirl is just the perfect size and I anticipate being able to use this a lot. I like swirls, I like that pattern in the background. So that's why I really fell in love with this swirl stamp. Now this looks really bold against the white. But in the end, all you're going to do is see a little bit of this peeking through, which is my plan. But you also get a little bit of the texture because I've used the acrylic paint as opposed to just archival ink. Now I'm stamping on the back cover too. Remember, this is a journal cover. And I want the front and the back of the journal cover as well as the insides to all read as a cohesive unit. Loving the look. This is the first time I've used this stamp and uh, quite happy. When you use your acrylic stamps with acrylic paint, make sure you stop, take the time to clean them. Just like when you, you have to stop and clean your stencils when you've used modeling paste or gesso, you have to stop and clean your stamps when you've used acrylic paint on them.
and making sure that's dry before I go in and add paint. Now here I'm using the Deco Art paint and I've grabbed two colors, transparent yellow oxide and quinacridone gold hue. I sub out and I use yellow oxide in the Liquitex Basics brand burnt sienna or red oxide from the Liquitex Basics brand. I found this DecoArt Americana Premium was a little bit too translucent, too transparent, and I wanted a little bit more coverage, a little bit more blending. But again, use what you have. But my, my point is you can get the same colors using different paints. It doesn't require the exact paints, but this is a winning color combination for sure. And I'm blending this. And this is where I think the magic happens. When you mix paints and you blend the wet and wet, something magical always happens. It just, so you get the yellow, you get the straight, burnt orange color and then you get whatever happens when you blend those two together. I'm working this in with my fingers, I'm working it into the texture that's there with the tissue paper that's adding wonderful texture as well as the modeling paste. And I'm absolutely loving it. Then I'm flipping it over and here I'm showing that I'm using the Liquitex Basics in there on the other cover and basically I mean you cannot tell tell the difference between the two if you want it more of the swirl stamp or the to show through you may use a more transparent paint like the premium if you want something a little more coverage you want paints that are a little more opaque and in the end, make what you have work. I could use a glazing medium to make it a little more transparent if I needed to. I could thin with water to make it a little bit more transparent. And there we have some lovely, lovely backgrounds now, or the beginnings of backgrounds. So now I am taking cobalt turquoise blue hue and just rubbing that in and I love when you add this teal turquoise to that yellow and orange it just pops now at this point I do not have a plan for where this is going with this cover. All I thought, you know what, I love this color combination. I did this on an art journal page a little while ago. Loved how it happened. So I knew that I wanted to do it on a uh, another piece, not just in my art journal. My art journal is where I experiment and I play with new ideas. And if something wonderful happens on them, then I will try to duplicate that on a canvas or on something that I make to sell. So I'm just rubbing this ever so lightly. It's catching in the texture. Here's why I wanted the texture. This teal this turquoise is catching on the high points some is more opaque some is more blended and, and you know kind of like a fog but I just love how this looks and you will this will not be the last time you see this color combination being used by me it is you know definitely autumn color zone which I laugh because the day before I was wanted to do a fall October 
page and I just inspiration wasn't coming and I couldn't even start and he background done now what so now we have the background all done and I absolutely love the colors now when I created this I really had no idea what focal image I was going to do I thought you know what I'll solve that problem down the road so I just thought I'd take you for a bit of a ride to to show you how I select the focal image these are fairly strong colors but let's just go and see so I went through my napkin focal images that I can decoupage on there and you know I just lay this lay the napkin on here you know do the colors go the blue there's a little bit of that teal in there this would probably go I'm not sure about the scale of it now remember I typically want to have a sentiment and stuff so this you know this will go in the maybe pile we have this one you know and we again have those that bright yellow and the oranges in there so and the blues so this would go as well so we're putting that in the maybe pile so we have this wolf and sometimes you have two different orientations right so you've got to open them up because I would want this to go on this side you know so you're looking at the scale of it and then I'm also thinking what would the sentiment be I don't know I mean this would go we've got definitely got the colors there I don't know what sentiment to put on there so I'm putting this in the no file now all these napkins are available at Minnie's napkins and there's a link in the description box okay so here we have this rooster and again we have the rooster looking this way and we have it looking that way so that's always a good thing to get this would definitely go you've got the bright colors not sure that I would put this on a journal cover but you know something with similar colors and this for a fun kitchen one might be a f future plan so we have the yellow butterfly and we have different two different sizes so I could have two small ones and the yellow would go I can do a wash on top to make it more gold less yellow that you know could be a possibility so I'm going to put that in the possibility definitely the colors work with this peacock feather I just don't know how I would orient arrange this I'd probably layer them I have another napkin with peacock feathers because I love peacock feathers but you know what uh, it's the colors are great and I'm thinking you know I could get my peacock stencil and do something with that again this is giving ideas for future possibilities I could decoupage a pile of shells from the napkin and that would be more muted so that's a possibility we have this lovely sunflower so that could be there the scale I like the scale of this one it's a little brighter the 
This is a napkin that we've I've used this I'm thinking the background is a little bit dark here but that may work I like how that brings it out we have this beautiful definitely the colors work I would probably just take the center image on here definitely possibility oh we have another these are hummingbird and I could take out you know a few of them now so one of the things that I do when I'm not sure what focal image I audition them on the page but when it's on a napkin, sometimes what you need to do is water cut the elements out of the napkins and get rid of all the excess or the stuff that you're not going to use. So that was my plan. But then I decided, you know, I love this Three Sisters um, napkin. And this is such a beautiful work of art in its own right. So I'm just going to use that as my focal image. I take off the two layers of white off of it, and I'm just going to cut out these elements. Now you'll notice these sisters with the three sisters, you've got them looking both ways. So I'm just cutting them out and I'm trying to decide how I want to use it, which way I want to, how where I want to position it on the page. Now, when I'm water cutting it, I'm using a liner brush and I'm just dipping it in clear water. You don't need a whole lot of water. In fact, you don't want a whole lot. And I tend to go fairly close. You could leave more of an edge. You can cut with scissors if you prefer. When it gets too wet, if it, before you rip it, you may want to dry, dry it. Now I'm placing that on there, but I'm noticing that the women are kind of floating, and I don't necessarily like that. They're also looking the other way, so I cut out the other one, and this is what I mean. Here I'm trying it. Now this time I thought to myself, I'm going to leave this teal that they have at the bottom, and it put it on the bottom of my page and it grounds the focal image. And I'm, I like that look. So I'm really excited that that worked out here. I, I was getting ready to cut that off like I did on the other one. And then I had the thought. So sometimes in the midst of creating, you come up with great ideas and solutions to your problems. You know, just remember, you don't have to have everything figured out before you start. Now, underneath this focal image, because it's napkin and it's going to go very translucent, I want to keep the colors, the beautiful colors that have, the artist had used, vibrant. So I'm just tracing out where that space is with my white Stabilo All Pencil. When I took a watercolor class, they used chalk to outline things. Then it was removable. Same thing with the Stabilo. And you're going to see me remove that. I'm just making this a little darker so I can see it. Now, what I'm going to do here is grab some of my white gesso, thin it down a little bit. I don't need this to be perfectly 100% solid white. And I'm painting this out. Now, while I'm getting rid of the color and I'm putting white so the napkin is really, the colors are going to stay true and vibrant, it's also going to allow all that wonderful texture from the stamp, from the, t from the tissue paper that we collaged over it, from the stencil, to come through the napkin. So I'm not going right up to the white line, 
I am okay with it being a little darker around the edges because I know I'm going to be shading around there as well. So I, I kind of want that to be darker, making sure this is positioning. Now I'm grabbing the baby wipe and getting rid of the Stabilo All Pencil. And that's how easy it is because it's water soluble. You can use a watercolor pencil, you could use chalk, like I said. I just can't believe how wonderfully matched the colors of this napkin is with the background, you know, and thinking that this wasn't the plan. I, I didn't pick the napkin and create a background for it. I just created a background that I loved and went searching. Overall, I find that more successful doing it that way create a background you love and then find the focal image from your stash than starting with the focal image and trying to build something I find that causes more roadblocks and more of me in my head so if you're struggling with that same thing just create a background sometimes those backgrounds sit for a couple of days while you're deciding what goes there but eventually you will find a match. And that's why building your stash and my Build Your Stash series, and I'll put a link to it in the description box, is really important because you want to have a stash of things you can go to, focal images, uh, collage papers that you can go that are going to fit whatever your creative bent is at the time, whatever your color scheme. Once that was completely dry, I am doing the inside covers. Now, if you're doing an art journal page, you won't have this, but I want all the same elements, same patterns, same colors that I have on the front to be on the inside flap. Now this, I do not have the tissue paper. I, choose, I chose not to put tissue paper on the inside flap. I wanted it to lie a little bit flatter. So the paint doesn't go on as interesting, you know, some of those elements are going to be missing. Then I'm bringing in this stenciling because I put the modeling paste. I'm not putting modeling paste on the inside cover. That doesn't seem to be an appropriate place to put it, but I do want some of that pattern. And then I'm edging it with the teal and that really just frames it and works so well. Again, uh, something that came out of the creative process. So I stamped with my script stamp just to add some interest. I put it on the inside cover, so I added it to the top and now I'm splattering with some black paint and then I splatter with some gold as well. And I didn't want that on my focal image sometimes i do but here i just roughly you know masked it off i grabbed some deli paper i had sitting on my desk you got some big splatters or something that doesn't look great you can take a baby wipe and get rid of it then it sat now this is early morning the next day which is why the light has changed and I played around with the fonts and sentiments and I came up with this one and I like how the font kind of goes with the what lights on the focal image and it just seems you know this the napkin seems to be kind of 
magical. It has that feel to it. So you want your quote to match. And I want the quote to, to go on an art on the journal. And whoever gets this, I want it to be kind of open-ended. I don't want it to be too specific. So create magic seemed like a good notebook title. Here I'm shading around it. I shade around the focal image as well. And I'm shading around here using my floating acrylic technique that you've seen me use a gazillion times. I'm still fidgeting with the camera angle in this in since my new studio setup. Then I wanted to bring out this texture of the texture paste, so I decide to shade around it. And you can see above the, the sentiment and below the difference that little thing makes. It just adds and really brings out that texture and that, that element that we've added. And I do a little bit of it, and then I come back when it's dry, and I add more. It's always easier to build up. It's really hard to take away after the fact. I want to make sure that the shading is on the right side. you got to be careful when you turn things upside down that you're not inadvertently causing yourself some problems. I also did the floating acrylic on some of the highlighted areas on the napkin focal image, just to bring that out a little bit more. Just a reminder, if you aren't a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. If you're not getting the notifications, you may want to try unsubscribing and then resubscribing, clicking the bell and selecting it again to be notified. I know there's been a glitch somehow in YouTube that, you know, people have complained to me that they're not getting notifications, so that might fix it. You can also follow me on Instagram, at Creative Katie. So I'm absolutely in love with this journal cover. And there's the background, there's the inside flap, everything works together. I will be giving this a coat of Minwax Polycrylic Varnish. Thanks for joining me. Enjoy the close-ups of the finished project. And I'll see you next time.